Hello, welcome to this course video, which is the design of 15-story building. Okay, so right now, as you can see, this is the front view of the 15-story building, having a parapet wall at the roof and also using a slab at the roof. That is, it is using a roof slab. And also, if you look at this plan now, you can see that this building consists of one elevator, as you can see it here, and then this quarter-ton staircase or open well staircase. And there is also a reinforced wall around this staircase that is to give stiffness to the to this structure. Okay, so basically, what you're meant to know about before you can perform a structural design. What must come to your mind is to first of all perform the structural framing. So, knowing that the first thing that should come to your mind before you, you must perform a structural design is to first of all perform a structural framing. So, with this now, this course video will be on different parts, and the first part will be on structural framing. Okay, so the other one you, you just watched is the project or the course introduction. So this is now um, the part one, which is the structural framing. And to bring to your notice, this is a live project which we designed, which we designed this project for a client in Italy. So this is a live project and it is good to use a live project whenever you're training a young or any civil engineer so that to build their confidence okay so right now let us now dive into what we are here for today which is the part one which is the structural framing okay so on our last uh, video we did the grid line positioning so on this part right now, I'll be showing you column positioning. Okay, so there are simple rules that you must know when positioning your column, and which I'll tell you also on this. So right now again, I will now go here on my layer and activate my column layer. Here must be by layer, then here also by layer, and here also by layer. Don't forget that. Okay, so again right now, I will now begin to create my column. Since we're using the software product structure to design as our as our design software, our, the software requires you to use a polyline or a rectangle icon to create your, your columns. So never you use a line like this to create your column. As you know, that line has different segments. As you can see that this has a different segment. So the software will not know that this is a column if you use a line. So this now is now a trash. So make sure you use either your polyline or as you can see, polyline gives a column. If you draw a polyline with a column now, it will give you as a, as a whole object, as you can see just now, as you can see that. Okay, but I would like to use rectangle, as you can see here right now. So or just type rec and sorry, just type rec and then enter. Okay, so on this now, I will have to create my column. Now, when creating your column, since it is um, a structural framing, you first, first of all, you have to assume the column size. And now, then during, during the design, if the column size is not sufficient, then you cannot increase the column size right there on the design. So first of all, the, it is the ability of a structural engineer or a civil engineer to assume its column size. Now, for you to assume your column size, the minimum column size to use is what? 225 by 225 millimeter, which is six inch by six inch. Okay, but for a high rise building, you must not think of that kind of column. So for a high rise building, you, you should think of a bigger size of column. So with this now, since this is a 15 story building, as you can see there, I will use a bigger size of column. So I'll start my column size at 350 by 600. So right now, I'll just click anywhere here and type 350 and I'll press my tab key on my keyboard, tab 600, and I'll press enter. So with this now, if I check this dimension now, you will see that this is 600 length and 
350 millimeter with a scarcity that okay so i'll take this off right now so we are just done my column right now and i'm using a rectangular column for this 15 story building so right now i'll just copy this now now on copying it now you have to note the area that you want to position your column column positioning is very very important in structural design basically for a tall building or for a high-rise building because a tall building or a high-rise building requires stiffness and also ductility to be able to transfer energy between the structural members so you have to know how to position your column which i will show you just now so and also when you're designing for a high-rise building it is advisable to use a reinforced wall that does a shear wall on most part of your building so that it can be able to form stiffness to the structure so we will also use a reinforced concrete wall on most parts of this building basically on the basically on the corners of the building and also on this area where we have a shear wall which of course is, is it's already a reinforced wall and also here which is also a reinforced wall but apart from this area I will, we will also introduce a reinforced wall on most of the areas on most of the corners to form a good stiffness to the structure okay so right now i'll copy this my column now and the first place i want to establish my column let me just copy this now and the first place I want to establish my column points, I would choose right now to establish my column points around this place here. Around this place here. So I'll come here just now and establish my column point here. Now, it is good to make your column point to flush with the wall. So this column now coming up like this now, we, it, 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 it will not change the, 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 the beauty of this structure. So make sure you flush your columns okay so again now i will just go just now i'll go now and then make this column to flush with i'll move it now and make it to flush like this okay that's fine so this one now is now inside of the building which can be taken care of using cladding to just design this um, column face or column surface so when you're designing for a high-rise building don't just don't just think of hiding your column inside the wall as you can see that this column, this wall thickness or width is, is a 150 which is very small for us to use a column of 150 for this 15 story business so you are allowed to bring your column out into the into the um premises okay but not outside the premises okay that's fine so right now i have just established my first column point as you can see it here so again i'll just copy this column now and begin to place again i'll copy it now and i'll go again now the the placing of column depends solely on you as a structural engineer so right now i'll come again right now and place this one here now but the whole idea is that as a beginner let your column distance should not be more than six meters that is for a beginner as you can see that my column distance here is 4.15 meters which is 4,150 4, millimeters which is less than that okay so again right now i will watch again so right now we have just um create our first two column point as you can see it here again i will now copy this column point now and then copy it immediately and then begin to place on other places too so i will also want to establish my column point on this area here so I'll come here and establish my column point here. But first of all, before I establish, I'll first of all click on this and make sure it is directly on this face. And when it's on this face now, I'll have to make this column to now be at the center. So I'll click on this column, locate this, locate this column center now, which is around this place here. And I'll type M, enter, which, which is move, and move it from this point and place it here, okay? So right now, I now have this now as my second second column point, as you can see there. Okay, I can choose to hash my column if I want to hash. Let me just hash it just now if I want to hash this column. Okay, let me just leave it. It is it is not required for you to hash. Instead, I'll just go and then increase my line weight thickness for my column, and then this is column here. Okay, increase it to let me say um eighty, and then say okay, and then I'll just close this now. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So now, right now, it is now visible. Okay, so again, right now, I will also go again to place another column point again. So I will quickly copy this column now and then place again. I will want to place my column points here around this place here and keep this here. Okay. 
and keep this making this straight and keep this here first then i want to take this column to be horizontal so i'll just rotate this column now from this point and make it a horizontal column sorry make sure your columns are straight either vertical or horizontal so I'll locate this now and then make it horizontal here okay that's fine and i can choose right now to flush this column now with this place here by flushing it with this um wall here i'm making sure that this is my center okay yes that's fine so i have flushed this right now in this place again also i will also make this now to flush with this wall here flush this with this wall okay because th this is a void area as you can see this this, this place is a void area inside the building okay so right now i have now created again other column points here i will also do the same thing here right now by copying this and go all the way down here again and place another column point here and making sure that they are flushing also with the wall here and flush this now okay that's fine so again i have now created another, another column point here which as you can see i have just done just now okay so with this again right now i'll just come again now and then I can just go ahead and create another column points, which I'll just go all the way down here now. Copy this now, copying this, and then go all the way down here and place my column points here. And by doing this now, I'll just rotate this column and then make it a vertical one. Okay. And I'll copy this right now and move into this place here and keep this here. And then move this right now from this point and move this one inside here and keep this here okay that's fine so i have also established my next column points here which is around here and i'll do the same thing again on this other side here by putting this here so i'll copy this column now copy this column just now cp or co by copying this column and go going all the way down picking it from here all the way down to this place and also placing this here okay and then i'll also go again and place my column points again copying this column now and i want to place my column points around this place here around this place around this place but first of all i'll have to okay we forgot to place a grid line here as you can see on this place so i'll copy this now and then cp or co to copy i'll copy it from uh, let me just use a track to track these points here okay and place this one here that's fine so again i'll have to place i can choose to place my column points here around this place here so that it can give um give this place a little stiffness so i'll go again right now copy this and copy this so the whole idea is that let your column distance should not be more than six meters for a beginner except maybe you have a lot of experience you cannot go all the way down to eight meters and all that but it's, it is advisable for high-rise building maintain less than six meters so i'll come here and place this first and then i will now come here right now i'm making sure that this is flushing by putting this first and copying this now making sure that this is at the center which is from here to here okay and then i will now go and make it to flush with the wall copying this one right from this point and making sure they are flushing here okay that's fine and this is fine so again i will just go again right now and then place my column again on this same place here which is the reverse i'll copy it now all the way down to this place here and also place this one here okay and i'll make sure that this column is flushing with the wall here okay i have done this one also and i'll go again right now i'll begin now and placing okay i have done this now and i also done this one here these other places here i'm going to use a concrete wall for these other places that's why i'm leaving all these places here because i want to use a concrete wall on this area okay and also on this area to concrete wall and also i want to use a concrete wall around this area here okay a concrete wall around this area and then because i want to use a concrete wall to maintain stiffness of for this structure and then again i will also copy my column cp or co and move it sorry copy it all the way down to this other side and by doing that again i will also flush the column to make sure the column flush with the wall around like this and keep this here okay that's fine and the same thing happens to this other one too i'll copy this right now cp or co and making sure that it is also at this point and place this here first 
and make sure that it's flushing with this wall also i'll come here and place this here okay that's fine again also right now i'll also copy this other one here copy this and then make it to flush with the wall here and go all the way down to this place first of all keep it and then make it to flush come here and keep this here okay so make sure your columns are in alignment because if they are, if they are not in alignment they will not form a good structural um like they will not form a good structural stiffness and it is very bad for you to have that okay so again right now i will also come to this place copy this column now and copy this column also these two columns cp or co is copy and copy it from this point all the way down to this point and keep this here okay that's fine and then right now we have we are almost done placing our column points all these places that you're seeing here i will use a, a concrete wall for that okay and then this other side to concrete wall again so let me now go again right now and repeat what i just did for this other side here what i did for this side so i'll just locate the center of this structure right now and then use what they call mirror and mirror my column so the center of the structure is on this place here so i'll just quickly right now highlight select my column points around this place just highlight this place now right click and then say um quick select and then come and choose layer and then choose column i'll choose column now column layer and okay automatically to just pick all the column points here i'll not type mi which is me will enter and i'll mirror my this column now onto this plate because they are they are similar this plan this area and this plan is typical is typical so i'll mirror it now and then click upward here and then say um no don't move so right now we have just placed as you can see right now we have placed the column that we have here onto this place here and then i'll just remove this from now and remove this and also remove this here okay that's fine so again right now you can see what we have just done so far you can see what i've done so far on our plan we have a duct here we have a duct here there's a duct around this um, place here this place so let me go and copy that and then place that void as a duct so make sure you don't um yeah this place here is a duct so i'll copy this right now and copy this also again and then also i think that's we have only one duct there that's all okay we have also ducts here too so i'll copy this duct symbol which i which i removed before because duct has structural elements so i'll copy them and copy this also okay and then copy this yes so always place because this dot nothing means that there is a hole here this is where all the pipes on this toilet wall we pass through so make sure you you also respect the um like like you also respect the mechanical aspects and put it into consideration because if you don't provide this this um this void and then you not design it as a whole slab and it might give issues during the construction and which might also affect the stability of, of the structure so make sure you consider everything while you're doing your design okay so i'll come here so again right now and then place this here okay that's fine and then we have okay we have copied all, all the duct in the building okay and i'll come here just now and then cp or c auto copy and i'll copy right now i'll use a this roof this um, lift point as my reference point and transfer them right, right now onto this other place here using the lift as reference point and then transfer it and put this here. okay that that's nice so right now i now know that i have a duct wall here which i'll have to place concrete beam on this place to be able to form this duct this duct here okay i'll create a grid line on this place later okay so right now again we have just done so we are done creating all our column points now as you can see that we are done creating all our column points for that the all other remaining places we will be used as a reinforced wall like this other one here i'll use a reinforced wall for this for this area to form a good stiffness and also on this area also i'll use a reinforced wall to form all that okay so right now i'll now move in now to what i have so first of all let me now go and create a um, beam on this area so that we can use it as a duct so right now i'll just come here use a line to locate first of all change to my grid line layer and then use a line to locate the midpoint of this place like the center of the wall and type xl enter h enter and then put this place now now first of all offset my assumed beam width of um 
I want to use the beam width of 300. So I'll just use right now and then say, uh, okay, let me use it. Yeah, 300 is okay. Or yeah, 300, 150, and then offset this first and offset this. No, this is too big. Let me use the beam depth of 230 or 225. So offset enter 112.5. And I'll offset this now and offset this again. And I'll change this right now to any layer that I have here. This is just to, I can choose to any layer I have here. Let me choose this red. Okay, that's fine. And then not to have um, this thickness. I can choose to change the line width to any of this or this or the other this. Then I'll have to trim off now this point here. This is just a beam line, which I want to create to be able to know that this is a beam that, that, that will form the dot hole. This dot hole here, okay? So again, right now, I'll trim off this and also, I'll also trim off this here, okay? And then I'll now remove this, um, remove these other lines here, remove this line also and this line. Okay, and then I'll also remove this one now and then extend this my okay, and also I'll have to break um break this grid line because this grid line is only serving for this for that for that beam which will form for the lift for this um duct. And I'll also right now I'll trim off and the, sorry, not trim off, break and break from this point here to here and remove this one here. Okay, e enter. Okay, that's fine. So right now I'll, I can choose to change this right now to a dash um lie i can choose to use this now line type i can choose to use heading and then change my line let me see 300 my line scale okay that's fine and then you can now see that this now is not showing as this i can choose to use a sharper color let me choose um um yellow that's fine no yellow is here already for window and let me just change it to what is not on the let me use purple Yes, purple is not here. I can choose to use purple here and then say uh, very light one, this one here, and then say okay, that's fine. Okay, so right now, okay, so let me choose to extend this again also to the place here. Okay, so right now we have known that this here is for dots. So I can choose to copy this dot and this being right now onto every other place which I have dots. So I'll come here at this reference point here and I'll come here and place this here. Okay, okay, that's fine. And I'll come again and then I have a dot here again. I have a dot here. Please remind me. Okay, here, here. And I'll place this here. And I'll come again, reference point, and I'll place this one here. Okay. And then we also have dot here again. We have we also have dots here, and I'll place this um, one here. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We have a dot there. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we have a dot there. And then I will also come again and then place this one here. Okay. And then I will also come again now where yeah, we also have a dot here and place this dot here. This line here and then this beam here also and place this here. Okay. And then we also have it around. Let me see. We also have it here. So right now, I'll choose to create another one here, but the vertical one. So I'll first of all place this here and then click on them. Click on the tree and then rotate now. Arrow, rotate and make it to be vertical. Rotate it now onto this point. Type 90 and enter. Sorry. Um, just rotate normally and make sure you align that. Rotate and rotate like this and just click okay that's fine so right now i can choose right now to um move this to flush this with this okay and then trim off this excessive one i can trim off this excessive beam here because in this one have a different size for this dot okay so because of this now this dot here should be a reinforced wall also so right now i'll just form a grid line into this place here and also a grid line here okay that's fine so this is also this will also be a reinforced wall here okay let me see yeah I, yeah I can just do that and then we are almost we are done now with what we are doing just now so we are done with our column position as you can see that so this is how to position your column let me just shift this off from here and then bring this down to this place here so we are done now position our column now once you position your column the next thing to do is to superimpose your column onto the first floor to see if the column are what symmetrical like if they are 
if, if they are if they are at the same point where we have placed them here and also on this place so if this structure is irregular then your column points will, will not be the same and it is advisable that when you're designing for a high-rise building your column your structure should be should be regular and also your column should be symmetrical and also regular so right now i'll just click on this right now and then right click and then say select similar to, to pick all my column points and then copy right now cp or co i'll take from the leaf because the lift is a best reference point for any building or circus okay so right now i'll come here right now and then place this one here okay so let's now confirm if our column points are at the same point as you can see right now all our column points are at the same point as it is on the first floor that shows that the building is what regular and not regular so right now you can see that all our we have um, this right now and then we also have um, a balcony here as you can see we have a balcony here so we will have to copy this balcony and copy this balcony also and copy this balcony let me now change the balcony first to a hidden line Hidden light type so that we will know that that is a cantilever balcony. So I also reduce the line width to 0.118 and then make, making sure that it is given to me. Let me choose here 300 and let me see. Let me choose for 500 and then okay. Okay, that's fine. And now go here right now. So if I see this now, now this is a this is a balcony or cantilever slab. So I'll copy the, I'll just first of all mash over this just now and then mash it to anywhere we have this balcony. I'll keep this here also and then keep this here also. Make this match property here and then mash it here also. This is also a cantilever here and match this here also. Okay, and this one here. So once I'm done matching now, I will have to copy this balcony. I can choose here, copy them here, copy the, copy with, with the name. So I will know that this is now a cantilever um, slab, which I meant to, which I which I'm going to insert at the at the at the at the upper floors. We will begin the design. Okay, so I'll just copy that just now. So you have to make sure you note every changes on the plan. So I'll copy them right now from this point as my lift point, and then go again right now and place this here. Okay, so with this now you can see that it has now it is now known to us that we have what they call uh we I can choose to change it to white. No, I can do the noise, okay. So I so we are now known that this is now a cantilever slab, which are which we are gonna take care of when we go to the software. Okay, so always note that these things are there for you, and also on this side, also we also have this here. Okay, that's fine. So knowing this now and having this in mind just now, we will now go on now. So we are done with our column positioning and then we will now be moving into the slab paneling and also the beam arrangement, okay? How your beams are going to run. So spend time when you're doing your framing because if you spend time on your framing, you won't spend time on your design, okay? So spend time to first of all understand how the plans is going to be and all your members are going to run, okay? So right now, let's now move on to the next stage which is now the beam and and then um, slab arrangement okay mm -hmm.